Hi, my name is Stefan Burns. I'm a geophysicist with Geometrics, and today we'll be going over field operations using the atom seismograph. A typical atom seismic system consists of 10 atom 1C seismographs and one atom 3C seismograph. Size Imager SW Plus is recommended. Let's cover basic operations of the atom seismograph. The atom 1C is a one channel seismograph, color yellow, with interchangeable geophones as long as they have LCK connectors. The atom 3C is a three channel seismograph, X, Y, and Z, color orange, also using an LCK connector for geophone attachment. The operations of both the Atom 1C and 3C are the same. To turn on, hold down the power button for 3 seconds. To turn off, press the power button once. The small connector is for power, and the typical battery life of an Atom is approximately 70 hours. The Atom 3C has a battery life of about 50 hours. Standard operations of the Atom seem to work better at or near a full charge, so I recommend you keep the Atoms topped up within reason. To start, let's discuss survey geometry. There are many ways you can set up a shear wave velocity survey. There are isotropic arrays, such as triangles and circles, L arrays, and linear arrays. Linear arrays are the easiest to set up but provide the least rigorous data analysis, being 20 to 30% lesser in data quality. L-shaped arrays are practical and rigorous. Triangular and circular arrays can be difficult to set up, but provide the most rigorous data analysis. Often, the conditions and layout of your field site determine the type of array chosen, but it is recommended to always perform the most rigorous array if possible. For field work, this typically means a L or a triangular array. Deploy the atom seismographs as shown in the following schematics, from lowest serial number to highest. With this survey system, consisting of 10 one-channel atoms and a single three-channel atom, you can do two main types of surveys really easily. You can do HV ambient noise surveys, in which the ratio between the Fourier amplitude spectra of the horizontal and vertical components is calculated. And this effectively is a ambient noise vibration survey. And those ambient noise vibrations can be estimated. And this can be done with a single three channel atom. You can also do shear wave velocity surveys or VS surveys for short. And these require multiple channels, 10 to 11 channels being the minimum recommendation, but you can use as small as four channels. This uses vertical component data. So an HV survey needs three component, horizontal, two horizontal, one vertical, and a VS survey requires just vertical data. Now, with the seismic system consisting of multiple 1C seismographs and, uh, and a 3C seismograph, you can do both of these. You can do HV and VS, and you can collect them both in a single survey. So this data can be used for UBC VS30 or IBC VS100 site classifications, deep surveys of geologic structure, stratigraphic and lithologic studies, foundation engineering, and micronization studies, which is the HV method. Once turned on, the status LEDs of the atom begin to flash. There are three LEDs, a green LED for power, an orange LED for Wi-Fi, and a yellow LED for GPS. Once turned on, the green power LED will begin to slowly blink. Once GPS is locked, the yellow GPS LED begins to slowly blink. After about five to 30 seconds of having GPS lock, data begins to be recorded and the yellow GPS LED will blink rapidly. It usually locks GPS quickly in open spaces, though it may take longer to lock GPS under a tree, or in a house, or next to high-rise buildings. If you have a cloudy day, that can also impact how long it takes to connect to GPS. If it takes a long time, you may bring the atom into an open space. Once it's locked, then the data acquisition will start. The Wi-Fi LED blinks two to three times during Wi-Fi download or it will flash during a geophone tap test. 
The power LED can also be red depending on the battery level. An atom with a very low battery level will slowly blink the red LED, and an atom with a lowish battery level will alternate between blinking green and red. It takes about 40 hours of operation before the red power LED begins blinking. After survey geometry is set up, atoms are deployed to their positions via serial number. Press each geophone firmly into the ground, sinking the spike as firmly as possible. If using a tripod base plate, place a sandbag on top to firmly couple the geophone to the hard surface. Turn the atom on with a 3 second power button press. The atom will beep. When collecting VS data, the data process from all the different atoms has to overlap in what is known as a common time block. This means that the last atom turned on in collecting data determines the start of the common time block, and the first atom turned off determines the end of the common time block. Therefore, it is important that you give the full set of atoms after being turned on a sufficiently long time to collect data for the common time block. If you turn your first atom on and turn off your last atom in the span of 20 minutes, you might only get 5 minutes of data because it takes time to go to each atom and turn it on or it takes time to deploy them. So again, you want to measure your survey length from the moment you turn your last atom on and end it the moment the first atom is turned off. It is important for HV ambient noise and VS30 surveys that 20 minutes, about 1200 seconds, of data is collected at a minimum. Sometimes less data is fine, but 20 minutes of data acquisition is a safe protocol to follow. For larger surveys, more time will be needed, and for very large surveys in urban areas, it is recommended that the data is collected at night. This is due to the noise of human activity. If you have your laptop in the field with you, you can process data during the 20 to 30 minutes that your current survey is running. Or you can tend to whatever else you want. It's really your choice. It's uh, when, when the atoms are collecting data for their 20 to 30 minutes for a typical VS30 survey, it's just important to minimize noise at the site. So don't walk near the sensors and try to limit any foot traffic or car traffic. Choosing a site far from foot traffic or cars is ideal. Once the survey is completed and enough time has elapsed and all the atoms have collected data in a common time block, the atoms can be turned off and collected together. The atoms can then be huddled together for data offload, what is known as a huddle test, and you can either offload data on site or off site using either a Windows, Android, or iOS device and using the Atom Downloader app. I like to download my data in the field and immediately create that second copy. So I like to uh, offload my data either to a tablet or to my Windows device. But the Atom does have a large SD card and it does not write over previous data. So it takes quite a while for an Atom to fill up its SD card. It hasn't happened to me yet. To download data from the atoms, you'll want to huddle them all together and activate your Wi-Fi hotspot. The Wi-Fi hotspot connects the Wi-Fi networks of all the atoms to your laptop, tablet, or phone atom downloader app. Next, I'm going to show you how to use the atom downloader app for Windows computer to download the data from your atoms and start processing the data using Size Imager or SW+. Thank you for watching this Atom Operations training video. Part 2 covers how to download data from Atom Seismographs.